Baking bread appears to be an artwork, but actually it's a tasty combination of biology and chemistry. But it's something I've never actually done on my own before in a kitchen. Well, making bread is actually relatively simple, and today we're going to explore making a loaf of bread and throw in some scientific ideas as well. So the first thing you need to do is to measure out your flour. Flour. How much? 500 grams for this recipe. What we're going to do is to put together all of the dry ingredients. So if we get a sachet of yeast, so it's seven grams of yeast, what is yeast? So yeast is a small, single-celled organism. So this is living? This is living. That's really strange. It is quite <laughs> strange. We now need a teaspoon of salt. Next, if you start to add the water. Is this making the dough? Yeah, so when we have water and the protein from flour mixed together, and that forms something that we call gluten. It does look a bit kind of structureless to begin with, but what you're looking for is a nice big lump of dough that's going to form. Oh, hang on. It's changing. If you follow a recipe like this, it makes it a lot easier. Usually what I do is not follow any kind of measurements. And <laughs> really? it's a much harder experience. If we're going to knead bread, you want flour in your hands. So everything needs to be quite nice and dry, so because otherwise you're going to stick to it. So you generally push your, the palm of your hand into the dough, fold it over, and then turn it 90 degrees. So when you're going a bit faster, it's going to start looking like this. So you're always kind of turning it this way while pushing your palm into it. So what's the, uh, the little yeast organisms doing in my dough while I'm doing this? OK, so they, they should be undergoing some metabolic reactions. They are respiring and producing carbon dioxide. And that is going to add up when we then leave the bread to prove, to rise for a while. So why am I kneading it? So you're kneading it to really allow the, the protein from the flour to mix together with water to form lots and lots of gluten to kind of smash this all up to mix it all together to make a real kind of firm structure. A so, structure? What, like a net? Or? Yeah, or like a, like a matrix. This will allow those carbon dioxide bubbles which are being produced by the yeast to be trapped. So how long do I actually need this for? So anywhere, usually I do between probably about five minutes, but what you're really <laughs> looking for, <laughs> what you're really looking for is that the kind of the dough should start to become quite kind of elastic. And a good test is if you push your thumb into it. You oh, it's rising. It. That's the gluten becoming elasticated. Yeah, it's bouncing back. So we've done our first session of kneading for about five minutes. We'll leave this now for about 30 to 40 minutes, time enough for it to rise, maybe roughly double in size. And we're going to knead it again, but this time for probably only about 30 seconds. So what I like to do is put a bit of flour on top of it. Why? So this will just give it a bit more of a professional look at the end. And you can score the top of it as well, giving these points of weakness for it to rise a lot more. You made me quite excited about this. Should we put it in the oven? So we have to wait first oh. for another two hours or so for it to get much bigger. All of the rising happens before it goes in the oven because it's happening due to an organism. So now we need to put our bread into the oven for about 25 minutes at about 200 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to whack it up for the last 10 minutes to full blast, which will be about 250 degrees. Smells good. Oh, wow, look. What should it look like inside? As long as none of it is still uncooked dough, I think we've done pretty well. <gasps> that looks amazing. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? That looks really, really good. We can see the air bubbles that were made from the yeast. Yeah, so that's what's given it this bouncy structure now. So it's reduced the density of that dough. But there was no difference to the outside to the inside. So why is this bit so crusty? That is why we whacked up the temperature at the end. Oh. So it's almost to toast the outside. And that is how you create a nice crust on a bread. For more sweet science, watch Sarah and David show you how to make honeycomb. And for more science every week, click subscribe and thanks for watching. Because it's happening due to an organism so that it will die once it's gone beyond, <laughs> gone beyond a certain temperature. So That sounds really brutal, but yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>